Hello, everyone. Um, hope that uh, everybody can hear me now. So welcome to this SmartScript webinar that will cover the topic developing your first CDK application. Today with me I have Christoph Drudlers, who is the MyScript Cloud Development Director, and he will take you through a simple calculator application that makes use of our handwriting recognition to capture input. And as for myself, I'm Fernando Rin. I'm the Director of Online Sales. So this webinar will last about 30 to 40 minutes, so no longer, I assure you. We'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end. However, for best audio quality, uh, we will shut off your microphones during the session. However, if during the presentation you have a question that comes to mind, please use the chat feature built into your GoToWebinar tool so that we can answer it at the end of this uh, presentation. You'll also find that there's a little hands-up feature that you can use, and this will let us know that you have a question that you want to ask, and at the end of the session, again, we will, we can, we will open up the mics so that you can actually uh, exchange with us during the Q&A session. So with that said, let's get started. The first thanks for everyone for sh showing up. Uh, this is the first of a series of webinars that we're planning to do in the context of our new developer portal, and I'll talk a bit more about that at the end. So what's the agenda for today? Um, the agenda today is we're going to cover um, we're going to cover, uh, let me just get this screen back because I think we're blocked on the first screen here, so I want to make sure that everybody can follow here. So I think we have a little problem with the sharing here. Uh, here we are. So this should, uh, can we just relaunch this? So here we are, um, the agenda. So I'm going to talk two minutes about my script. Uh, then we're going to cover, you know, how our technology is packaged, what are the different offers, because there's still a lot of um, confusion between what is an SDK or ATK and CDK offering. And that, that will be a very short intro, and then I'm going to pass over to Christoph, who's going to take you through the simple calculator application uh, that will expose the code and uh, with the demonstration at the end of how the whole application works. And like I said previously, we'll reserve plenty of time at the end for the Q&A session. So a couple of words about the company. Uh, MyScript is a company that's been around for some time, as you can see, founded in 98, 1998. Uh, the world leader in handwriting recognition with some pretty prestigious customers uh, from all around the world in different sectors, whether it be IT, automotive, uh, and others. Today we support all the major operating systems, and I've just listed the main ones here. Uh, in the context of automotive, we also go down to some uh, very specific on-demand type of uh, operating systems and hardware devices. One of the strengths of MyScript in terms of text uh, recognition is the number of languages supported. We support over 64 languages today in, uh, in total script and uh, full uh, language uh, context modes. We have over 200 value partners um, all around the world. And uh, we estimate as of today uh, over 160 million users all around the world uh, that have access to our technology because, again, we are embedded on some of the major OEM platforms. So let's talk a bit about the technology itself. How do you integrate MyScript into your applications? Well, what I've done here is I've represented different offerings, and we're going to start by the SDK, and on the horizontal axis, what you have is an integration development effort. So at the very lowest level, uh, we have our SDK. If uh, a little bit above, with a little less uh, integration development effort, we have our cloud offer, which is a subset of the SDK. And that's what we're going to focus on this session today. We're going to take you through a cloud example. Higher up, we have what we call the application toolkit. Uh, toolkit is built with um, a panel, which has the UI, widgets, uh, and components. These are different subsets built into the toolkit. There will be future sessions, webinar sessions, that will expose this in more detail. And that, of course, all this allows you to build applications. So we do have a couple of apps, MyScript apps. Uh, the idea here is really to be able to provide showcase uh, applications 
to users so that they understand the power of handwriting. Now this is a bit of a complex uh, slide, um, I'm not going to go into much, too much details, but what I want to expose here is that whether you go SDK Cloud or ATK, uh, we have solutions for covering four main technologies which are handwriting, so text recognition, math recognition, shape recognition and music recognition. Those are really the four main types of recognition engines that we, we have today. So let's focus a bit more on the cloud because that's the topic of this webinar and I'll explain to you a bit of how this works. So uh, built uh, on uh, hosted servers by uh, MyScript, we have our MyScript cloud infrastructure and that really is, is, is lying on top of our under uh, core SDK. So in effect when you're doing a cloud call you're interacting with our SDK. So what do you send us? You send us what we call digital ink. So digital ink in a, in a word is a, what we call strokes or bring it down to a lower level it's XY coordinates with pen up and pen down and Christoph will take you through this in the code examples to explain exactly how we capture and how we transmit this to our server. As a result, depending on what you're asking in terms of recognition, whether it be text, shape, music or math, we're going to return the result in the appropriate format that makes sense so that you can then go on with your application and do what you want with these results. So that's really a, a very high level view of how the cloud works and um, I'm going to pass on to Christophe, but first what I'd like to do is while we set Christophe up with the, with the webinar, I would like to just take a quick time to, to answer a quick poll for us. So we're going to do a, um, a very quick poll, uh, which is um, to try to learn a bit more about you uh, as participants and what you have in terms of experience using our CDK. So I'll give you a couple of minutes just to answer this. And uh, then I'm going to hand over to Christoph, who's going to carry on with this presentation. Ouais, c'est moi qui ai les souris. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to all, depending on the zone uh, you are living in. Uh, I am uh, Christophe Doulers, and uh, we'll dive into some code right now so uh, we can have a better view of how you uh, use the MyScript technology. So we go and into our slide presentation back here. Okay, and uh, what we plan to do here is a quick and dirty uh, calculator like the one you see on the screen. Uh, basically we won't use the math uh, SDK that uh, Fernando uh, spoke about. We're using only text today to make it uh, short and quick. Uh, but if you are interested into uh, math, uh, math usage, uh, maybe you could uh, uh, send us a quick mail. Uh, you see later an address you can uh, uh, send a mail to. Uh, but uh, we have many webinars uh, planned this year. So don't hesitate to let us know what you want to have and learn about. So this calculator is made of... Uh, uh, several parts. Uh, the ink canvas, you know, HTML uh, canvas, uh, we use to write on. Uh, we have a result zone where we'll see the result ap appearing and a small animated GIF icon uh, showing the process underway. So that's the playground. Let's uh, uh, see what we can do. But before, let me uh, mention that uh, we're using today the MyScript Cloud, so using the server uh, we have uh, online today, but uh, you could do the exact same application using an offline SDK or uh, some widgets we are providing also. Um, so the process will be first 
uh, create a canvas so we can have a drawing area, uh, store the strokes we are drawing on that canvas. Then we can collect all the strokes, send the strokes to the uh, server. Uh, we use a JSON uh, format for that. And the data we send to the server are made of strokes, obviously. The language, because we need to determine at the server level uh, which language we are using. And the API key, the app key or the API key is a personal key we provide you uh, with so you can access the server, get the data, have the scoreboard, uh, everything you need to handle your uh, cloud account. Whenever you, you send a request to the server, what you get in return is a result. Uh, that result may depend on the content you send. At the text level, you can have characters, words, level, text, the full text, but also can be different if you use math, for example. You have a LaTeX answer or a MathML. Or for the others, you can have the complete object tree, so you can parse it and do whatever you want with the uh, results sent back from the server. Uh, OK, HTML is the first part. Uh, probably obvious to uh, most of you, we create a canvas, set the size of the canvas. We create uh, two, uh, two parts, uh, the loading icon and the result zone as a paragraph uh, tag. And uh, we add the MyScript method, the JavaScript, we'll describe in a second. Uh, and initialize that uh, JavaScript uh, by calling the setup function. What is the setup function made of? Basically easy, declaration of uh, some uh, variables, the current stroke, we'll call it stroke, the array of strokes, the current use, the user is currently uh, drawing. Uh, flag telling us if the current user is writing on the canvas or not. And uh, we initialize the pen or the color of the pen uh, with blue ink. Then we need to handle, uh, I would like quick comment first. Uh, the whole code I'll be uh, describing today is not 100% targeted to the uh, recognition. Uh, obviously, if you want to do recognition, you need to gather uh, dots, ink, electronic ink. And I wanted to quickly go over uh, the uh, events you need to handle uh, on the canvas so you can gather that ink, electronic ink, before sending it to the uh, recognizer on the server. So let me go quickly over the uh, events you need to uh, handle, but that's probably familiar to you, so I'll go quick. If you have any question, I mean, ask them uh, using the question or the chat uh, on the um, GoToMeeting. Uh, here on the mouse down, uh, what uh, we do in the first four lines is basically get the real X and Y uh, position of the mouse or the finger on the tablet uh, because the guy may have, uh, somebody may have scrolled the page, so we need to get, take into account the offset. But basically what we have at line 5 is the real X and Y where the user is currently moving the cursor. Uh, so we store, we create a stroke, a new stroke, and store the X and the Y in that uh, uh, structure and we set the flag writing to true because the, the currently the user is drawing something on the string. Then we have to deal with the mouse move event. Basically same story, we get the X and Y, the real one, and if the guy was writing then we need to draw the path, to draw the ink, render the ink. Here we are using a move to line to uh, function uh, pretty easy, you could do uh, better using quadratic, uh, quadratic uh, functions or do whatever rendering you want. But basically, beside the rendering, what we do in the two, last two lines is pushing the X, new X and Y coordinate into the stroke uh, structure. And whenever the user uh, click on the mouse up or release the mouse uh, button, 
what we do is push the new stroke into the uh, strokes array, set the writing flag to false because we're, we've stopped writing, and launch the recognition process using the recognize function. And here is the real part of recognition uh, we do uh, when calling the server. We need two things to call the server. First one is what I call the API key, which is a specific API key we provide you with, and the URL you need to call to do the recognition. Uh, there is a specific URL for specific kind of SDK, uh, meaning if you want to do uh, math, there is one URL. If you want to do text, there is a different URL. Uh, Beside that, we need to create the structure of the data we'll send to the server. We need to set the language. Here we're using uh, uh, English US and add the strokes we had in that array uh, earlier. We create the data structure uh, so we can send that data to the server, just adding the API key. And then we do the post um, call to the server. That's the only real HTTP call we do to the server to get the results done. So basically it's pretty easy. You create the structure, you send the stroke, give the API key and post the request. As a result, we'll get a JSON result here uh, and the result we get back from the server is what you see on the screen here. That's the structure we receive from the server when the recognition has happened. You've got an instance ID with these, which is a unique ID for each recognition request. You and then you have a structure describing the result. Uh, it's a text result, so you have segments of text. Here we have one segment. We have only one candidate because we ask no more than one candidate. Then the server is giving back the best candidate we, he has. And the, each candidate is made of a label. Here the label, the text basically returned from the server is three plus five. And the two scores, one is called normalized score and the other one is called resemblance score. Let's start with the resemblance score it's probably easier to explain. Uh, resemblance score is how good my three, my plus, and my five were to be recognized as three plus, plus five. I was pretty good because all the scores ranges from zero to one. So if you have zero, I mean, it's pretty bad, badly written, I should say. If it's one, it's perfect like you learned at school. The normal score is if you have several candidates, it's how close this candidate is, is to the real answer uh, regarding the other candidates uh, we could have asked for. Uh, currently, we have only one candidate, so basically the normal score is at the full, uh, at the high level uh, set to one. So now we have that structure in mind. Uh, we can use the content of that structure and dig into it, get the string, remember the structure was the result, text segment result, candidate number zero, and so in the string, a string here, we have the content, the result coming from the server. We try to evaluate that string using the eval JavaScript function, that's the way I create a calculator, pretty easy. Uh, and if ever we got a good uh, answer from the eval uh, function, we show the result in green. If the eval function returns an error, we show the result in orange, meaning the, the, the recognition happens pretty well, but the answer is not understandable as an equation or as a mathemati mathematical function that eval function can evaluate. So that's the case uh, when uh, uh, we set orange color. 
and uh, whenever we have a result, we show that in the result uh, result uh, zone uh, using the jQuery. Uh, I forgot to mention that we're using the jQuery uh, library here to make it short. If ever we have an error during the connection to the server, uh, server may be busy. That happens normally never, uh, but uh, you could have sent a bad content or a bad API key, for example. Well, you get a red uh, message coming back from the server that we show in the result zone. And that closes what the whole code, 100% of the code you need to do to use handwriting recognition and make a quick and dirty calculator. So I make that available on the URL. Uh, you have the URL here. You can uh, even access it yourself. Uh, so if I click here and I switch to the uh, application here, give me five seconds so I can switch. Uh, where is it? Okay, let, let's uh, try go to webinar. On the car here, so I can switch. Sorry, uh, it should be already. Okay, let's try. Okay, you should have it in a second. Yeah. So here, <laughs> the result. Uh, of the uh, application. Uh, you can see the canvas zone, you can see the result zone, and I can write immediately on the uh, on the zone here, I can write one, for example. So the stroke has been recorded into the strokes array, the strokes array, because of the pen up, uh, the strokes array has been sent to the server, and the server sent back the result, and the result is evaluated by the uh, the eval function on JavaScript. So I got a green result saying one equals one, which is pretty obvious. Uh, let's add some stroke here, like uh, I want to say plus something. And that may sound strange to you. Uh, why the recognizer send it back IT? Just because there is no context around those strokes. It doesn't know what's, what we are writing. It could be an I and a T next to each other. And that's why we've got a, an orange uh, or almost orange result. Uh, if I add some more strokes, the recognizer now can interpret and have more context to interpret what I wrote and the T becomes a plus because one plus two has more meaning than uh, uh, one T two. Uh, I could have more strokes. Again, you can access uh, that uh, URL and do some tests yourself. Uh, and again, and again, do whatever you want. So. Basically here, what you saw uh, using that uh, small calculator is one call to the server and you get a full result. You've got only one candidate be because we ask only for one candidate, but uh, we could uh, ask for more candidates, show all the candidates, and that's part of another uh, webinar we have and uh, you could participate later on. Uh, let's go back on the uh, on the uh, slides here, and uh, what you saw is a very uh, simple application, but there are many many different usage you can do uh, on using text, using uh, shapes, using music, and you are the specialist on those different uh, domains. So I mean we are. Heavily uh, waiting for your IDs coming in, and uh, if you want to try uh, the MyScript technology, uh, would invite you to join uh, the uh, developer community uh, we have on uh, devmyscript.com. You will see more details about our, uh, about our technology. You can register. You can have a, a full free access to our technologies. If you want to do 
ask questions, we have forums, we have many ways of interacting with each other, and we'll be pleased to uh, answer your question there, or uh, answer also uh, uh, your question uh, right now, if you have any immediately. Uh, Anyway, if you have any suggestion later on, I mean, you, uh, regarding this webinar, uh, maybe you want it more technical, less technical, slower, uh, faster, I mean, you could send the feedback on the webinar at myscript.com. Uh, I'll probably turn over to uh, Fernando and uh, answer your questions. So um, let me just uh, get this back up. Um, so I already have one question here. So any plans to create sample iOS code to work with CDK for text recognition? So maybe Chris, so let me just open up the mics here. Maybe it'll be, because, uh, be easier for you than having to type. Or So I'm going to try to open up the mics for all the participants if I get background noise, of course. It mightn't be possible, and I'm going to pass over, uh, open up uh, Christophe also, Christophe because Christophe will be the one answering this um, for me. So, on you're, you're on. Okay. so, can you hear me? Yep, I can yep. hear you. Okay, perfect. So, the first, so the first question. question. Sorry, go. Okay, so the, the first question I have is, uh, are there any plans to create sample uh, iOS code to work with CDK? Uh, for text recognition. Uh, there, there are some uh, sample codes uh, available on the dev portal, but basically what you do uh, when you work uh, on iOS is using an HTTP uh, stack so you could send a request. Uh, so basically it's the same approach that the JavaScript version, except that you use the iOS HTTP stack. But we do provide the uh, sample code on the uh, developer portal. Yes, I plan to use um, iOS. Okay, so I mean, no problem with iOS. Uh, we do have uh, several applications uh, and several sample codes. Uh, using uh, Objective C uh, on iOS. So okay. uh, go to the developer portal, download that, and if you have any question, use the forum and uh, we'll answer those. Okay, thank you very much. So I've opened up the mics for everybody, as you could hear uh, one of the participants talk. So if you have any questions, you know, either uh, you can use the chat if you feel more comfortable, or just uh, fire away. Uh, to complete the, the, the answer about iOS, uh, we do provide uh, sample codes for Android, iOS, JavaScript, Java. Uh, T++, uh, whatever. And if you don't find what you're looking for uh, in the developer portal, uh, let us know. I mean, uh, we have so many samples available. We'll be happy to provide you with some uh, lines of codes. Uh, we, but sorry, we don't have any Fortran 5 or... <laughs> but we, we could work on that. So I have another question, Christoph. Um, yes. And this is the this is a very good question: Is how much would the digital ink cost if, if I was to write a full page, the equivalent of a eight by twelve, I imagine those are inch sheet of paper, so a U.S. legal type of a paper. So I'll pass it on to you, Christoph. If you can. Okay. Uh, let me be honest. I don't have the answer. Uh, why? because it depends on the device you're using. Uh, let me give you an example. If you are, uh, I have a real, real example to, uh, to, to tell you about. Uh, we have a small application that uses the text recognition that you could use uh, on, a, on an iPad. And the developer who has written that iPad application was sending all the X and Y coordinates, because you remember that we are sending on the X and Y coordinates, 
he was sending those coordinates as real numbers having 12 decimals. And uh, each page was something like 400k or 40k, I don't remember exactly. But I went to him and say, why don't you, why do you send us uh, 12 decimals? Just sending us integers, I mean, will be enough. Uh, so we will remove the decimals uh, and each page was divided by around 10 times smaller, obviously, because 10, 10 times less digits to send over the network. So basically the answer is pretty difficult. Uh, it depends on the resolution, the number of points you're sending. Uh, it depends on the device uh, and it depends on the number of points you're sending uh, because you could filter the dot and send only one dot out of two because we are pretty, um, I should add that in a seminar, in a webinar sometime, uh, because we are pretty independent on the, on the resolution uh, and we could give very good result with a low resolution. So in terms of megabytes, it depends. But let me give you an idea. Uh, a full A4, let's say a full letter size uh, page written on an iPad should be something like 40K, 50K. But it's an average. Eh? So I have not an exa exact number, so, uh, it depends. So le device. let me just uh, complement uh, Christoph's answer here. And uh, sorry if there's some echo, but I'm trying to, to remove it from, but it's uh, a lot of people connected right now. The 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 price of the of the of the of uh, the way we price uh, the CDK is indeed based volume based. So it depends on the the volume of digital ink that is sent to the server, and uh, you do have the prices of those of those uh, cartridges if you go to dev uh, to the to the developer portal, the dev.mystrip.com. Now, what's the best way? What's my recommendation to figure out? You know, how much are you going to be end up paying? is well we give you free access to the technology for three months so under a week you can have a simple application running on the sample device you're planning to use and when you subscribe to the trial you'll get a full log of everything that's going through our server so you'll see in detail exactly how much ink is being sent so the best way is actually uh, just go and test it and you'll be able to calculate yourself because you'll see the price, you'll see how much ink is being sent with that device, and then you can very straightforwardly do a, a, a math calculation. So uh, I know it's not the best of, of answers, but it's definitely the most precise answer I can give you. Any other uh, questions? I hear some people having dinner in the background, so bon appétit. So again, um, I don't want this webinar just to stay as you know, a one-off experience for you all. Uh, the real goal here is to have you sign up on our, um, on our portal and uh, Try it for yourselves. I mean, you're developers, obviously, if you came to this webinar. Um, really, just give it a go. Try it for yourselves. Um, and there's a form on the developer portal. You have uh, an email address there as well that we gave you. Uh, feel free to exchange with us. We're trying to get this as much interaction as we can with you folks. Uh, we're open to all suggestions that you may have. And uh, If you happen to be in San Francisco at the end of the month. We also have a, a developer conference going on there on October 21st and 22nd. So uh, if you're interested in joining up, there's a, the first day is free, second day is a, is a paying day, uh, fee charged. But, uh, you know, come, come around and, and meet us there if, you, if you're there. 
Also, this webinar will, is recorded, so we'll have it posted on the developer website pretty shortly. And we plan to have other topics um, uh, around our development tools, uh, other webinars that we are planning to put up very shortly. So, uh, if there's no other questions, uh, I have, uh, you have one question. So, wait, let me just make sure I un unmute Christoph here. Uh, we've, we've been through the text recording, but uh, are you interested in text, math, shape? Are you asking the question in general? Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, I'm interested in um, math, shape, and text primarily. And you... You want to mix them? Yes. I'm a, I'm a physics instructor, and so I, I use shapes, math, and text to, um, you know, um, teach physics. And so... Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's interesting. What about the others? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, time to wrap up then. Um, Thanks everybody for again for joining and um, hope this uh, this met your expectations. You'll get a short survey uh, with a with a thank you letter very shortly, and um, look forward to seeing you again. Bye now. Bye bye.